In the aftermath of the devastating Black Tusk assault on the White House, a number of essential personnel were forcibly abducted, leaving a void within the ranks. Amidst the ongoing efforts to reconstruct the castle settlement, the rescue of John Yazzie, a vital team member, is an absolute priority, as his expertise and contributions are indispensable to the mission's success. Agents, locate John and bring him home. Following the traumatic events of his helicopter being targeted and his subsequent rescue at the Mexican embassy, John is confronted with a deep-seated fear and reluctance of returning to the skies. How are you holding up? Okay. You sleeping better? Not really. Nightmares? Yeah. Back in the helo. Surrounded, waiting for your agents to get me the hell out of that embassy. Uh, that's normal. It should get easier. That's what the doc said. He'd give you anything to help you sleep? I don't think he had anything to give. Not like we've got a fresh supply of sleeping pills lately. I could get you some wine from the theater settlement if you want. Yeah, just what you need. A drunk native vet stinking up the White House. I'd rather have you drunk than dead. I'll be alright. Not if you don't get some sleep. I just need something to do. Help take my mind off what happened. We can always use a pilot. Honestly, Manny, I'm not ready to get back in the air. But if you need help with maintenance and logistics, I'm happy to make Fernanda and Casey's lives easier. That sounds like a great first step. I'll let Torres know she's got a mechanic incoming. Manny reaches out to John, who is dealing with PTSD. Manny assures John that he understands and empathizes with his current struggles. While John acknowledges that he's not yet ready to resume flying, he expresses a desire to stay occupied by offering to handle maintenance and logistics tasks for the other pilots. How you doing, John? Good. Sleeping better? Yeah. That's good. It's good to be working again. Nice to be able to contribute. You ready to get back up there? Honestly? No. That's okay. I haven't had a nightmare in a couple weeks, but it's just... It's too soon. I get it. I'm sorry. It's okay. No, I feel like I'm letting you down. You're not. But I do have a favor to ask you. Anything. I need help setting up the castle. If we want to have transpo in and out of the site, I need someone who can tell me if I'm setting up everything wrong. Last thing we want to do is move everyone in and then discover we can't move supplies. You looking to build a landing site? Yeah. Well, it's safer if you don't put it in the middle of the settlement. If we can land there, so can our enemies. That's a good point. So, what do you say? You want to help me rebuild the castle? Despite time passing, John remains hesitant about getting back into the air. Understanding John's apprehension, Manny presents him with a new opportunity. Recognizing John's expertise, Manny assigns him a crucial role in the cleanup and rebuilding of the castle settlement specifically focusing on tasks such as establishing a landing site and continued helicopter maintenance. How's it going? Good. We've almost got everything set up. You found a secure landing site? Yep. Everything is cleared and we have an underground entrance that leads into the settlement. If you don't know it's there, you might think we were ghosts disappearing into the night. <sighs> That's not creepy at all. <laughs> it was Eva's idea. You've been spending a lot of time with her lately. She's a good kid. Reminds me of my little sister, but funnier. She's funny. I think she has a crush on you. She reminds me of my little sister. Don't worry, Manny. You're the only one trying to start something at the castle. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll be sure to tell Mari you said hi. John has embraced his new responsibilities at the settlement and has excelled in his role. With the team's collective effort, they have successfully cleared a fresh landing site and made significant progress in setting up the necessary infrastructure. Throughout this journey, John has formed a close bond with Eva, whom he cherishes like a younger sister, finding comfort and support in their friendship. I'm sorry, Manny, but I really don't know if I'll ever be ready to fly again. I figured as much. You've got a landing site, but no pilot. I've got pilots. And I've got a coordinator and a mechanic that will make sure they get home safe. You're not disappointed in me? Why would 
I be disappointed? You've done everything you said you would. And you've gotten Eva to open up and trust us. Your new sister is even talking about taking over the radio station. That's great. But I'm a pilot who can't fly. You have to be at least a little annoyed with me. If you lied to me and got back up there with the team and got everyone killed, then I would be annoyed with you. But you telling me what you need, I can't be annoyed about that. It takes too much energy to be pissed at someone for not meeting unrealistic expectations. Okay, seriously, what has Mari done to you? You're all, like, calm and reasonable and zen or some shit. She helped me realize that some of my priorities may have not been that great. And like it or not, we're family now. And I'd rather have my new brother safe than trying to be something he's not and putting us all in danger. So you're okay with me organizing the pilots and maintaining the fleet? More than okay. That's exactly what we need. John confides in many, expressing his doubts about ever being able to fly again. Understanding John's feelings, many reassures him revealing that he had anticipated this outcome, yet emphasizing that his contribution in supporting the pilots is equally valuable. Moreover, John's presence has been instrumental in assisting Eva in helping her to open up and developing trust in the community. John also observes that many appears to be more relaxed than usual, speculating that Murray's presence may be responsible for this positive change in his demeanor. Intelligence had recently surfaced, revealing a significant lead on the whereabouts of John Yazzie. The southwest district of Washington, D.C. became the focus of attention as reports pinpointed his presence at the choke control point. Division agents wasted no time in preparing for the mission. In a calculated and coordinated assault, the agents stormed the control point, engaging in a firefight against the entrenched Black Tusk forces. However, as the agents fought their way through the facility, they received an update. John Yazzie has been moved by the Black Tusk, to the nearby train tracks, adding an additional layer of urgency to the mission. They needed to act swiftly in order to intercept them before they managed to get away with John. First, agents would need to neutralize the target, Echo One, otherwise known as John Train Steward. As they made their way through the train tracks, they encountered waves of Black Tusk forces that stood in their way. Despite this, the agents pushed forward. Eventually, they would find Train and attack him head on. However, once he was eliminated, agents would intercept Black Tusk comms that confirmed that John Yazzie was dropped off at the No Hope control point 10 minutes ago by the recruiter. With urgency, the agents proceed towards the No Hope Hotel. Upon arrival, they wasted no time and immediately got to work in eliminating the hostile forces that occupied the compound. As the agents cleared out the threats and brought the hotel under their control, it was then that Manny's voice was heard over the comms, saying that John Yazzie had been sighted at the Rayburn house. Frustrated that they had missed him again, they knew that time was a factor and quickly made their way over to the building on the eastern side of the district. At the Rayburn house, agents would encounter waves of Black Tusk forces. However, through the fighting, they would get disorientated and eventually lost. In frustration, they would punch a deer to their surprise, this didn't help, and it would be another 10 minutes of running around in circles before they realized where they needed to be. Eventually, they would find and confront Black Tusk leader, Dave Rhino Bishop. And while they were able to eliminate him, all the time wasted earlier on meant that they had missed John once again. Many announces that John has now been found. He is at the Space Administration HQ. The agents, again blaming the deer, vow to come back later on. Venison is on the menu tonight. However, first, they must catch up with John before he is yet again moved on. Once at the facility, the agents push forward through the hordes of Black Tusk. However, their progress was abruptly interrupted when they were ambushed by a rogue agent. Despite the challenging encounter, the agents persevered and triumphed over the rogue, although they did question their decision to undertake the mission with the added difficulty of four directives. It was discovered that the BTSU operative, Gabriel Dynamite Gonzalez, was holding John Yazi hostage. While the division agents were busy taking care of Dynamite and her troops, JTF forces successfully infiltrate the compound and rescue John. How are you feeling, John? Okay. No PTSD. You sleeping okay? I'll let you know tomorrow. 
I just got home, Manny. Can I at least wash the black tuss stank off me before you start the interrogation? Sorry. You're right. Look, I know you're worried about Mari. But you really don't have to be. They were good to me. I'm sure Mari will be fine. She's worth more to them alive anyway. What do you mean? Your woman is brilliant. She's like a super genius when it comes to this whole sustainable fish stuff. And she's pregnant. I don't know if you've noticed, but haven't seen a lot of pregnant people or kids running around. What are you saying? I'm just saying. If I were trying to rebuild civilization, it would be way easier to indoctrinate a baby than an angry teenager who remembers what the before times were like. To keep people in line and follow orders, you get them when they're young, when they're desperate. People with hope who know better? Those people are dangerous. But kids, kids don't know any better. They learn what you teach them. They believe what you believe. And if I were going to build a cult, I'd start with the kids. That... That does not make me feel better. After the successful rescue mission, Manny reaches out to John to check on his well-being. Sensing the need for a moment to gather himself before diving into an official debrief, John requests some time to catch his breath. However, Manny, consumed by worry for Murray's safety, overlooks the importance of giving John the space he needs. Fortunately, John understands Manny's concerns and reassures him that Murray is safe and is being looked after. There are a couple of key points here that I'd like to address. Firstly, the mention of the recruiter. For those of you who may have forgotten, he is presumably the leader of Calvin McManus's hunters that we brushed paths with not so long ago. Of all people, I find it a bit odd that an individual of his calibre is involved with the relocation of a civilian that has been held captive, and even weirder that we didn't see any hunters during this mission. In fact, instead we are greeted by an unnamed rogue. These two things have generally been considered contradictory to each other. And then to top it off, John would tell Manny that the Black Tusk is actually being good to him, like they're trying to come off as the good guys. I've alluded to this in the past, with the Black Tusk aiming to be the legitimate heroes of this event in human history. But maybe I'm reaching a bit here. It's just something about these three things feels completely off to me. Honestly, I don't know what to make of this at this point, but I feel like it's something we'll be hearing about more in the next season or two. In John's comms, there were a couple of references to someone called Eva. Based on one of the other targets in the season that we are to rescue, this is a reference to Eva Garcia. She was a student at Kenley College. I'm actually looking forward to her rescue mission. At Kenley, she ran a podcast with very Rick Velassi type conspiracy vibes, including a number of references to the phallus type nature of the statues that can be found on campus. If you'd like to learn more about Eva Garcia, I have a video on Kenley College that should be on screen. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and Extremis Mollus, Extrema Remedia.